Howdy, 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 all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to a completely new game no one's ever heard of before. <laughs> Stardew Valley just came out this week. Well, that's a lie. We're back at it. Anti-toolsing up in this village, valley, town. It's not a... I feel like calling it a town is a little bit much. I'd say this is a generous village. For the 30 people that live here. Yes. I mean, at, at what point is it just a homestead, you know? True. Or like an unincorporated piece of county. <laughs> Uh, you know how Phineas and Ferb always had that recurring joke about the Tri-County area? Yes. I feel like unincorporated, whatever you just said about an unincorporated portion of a county, that would, that would be a good analogous joke if you were trying to one-up or maybe just match the energy of Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. Uh, that That's been my goal my whole life. Oh no, I've been called out. Megan in the chat says it's Tri State area, not Tri County area. That it felt wrong as I was saying it. Thank you for the correction. Mario says we've got medicine for sale. Is it free opioids that the doctor's getting paid to hand out? Probably. Is there any other type of medicine? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Anti cancer drugs. It's fentanyl. Everything's fentanyl all the way down. All right. Looks like Meg and Susie Moo were just playing Stardew Valley right before this. Nice. Uh, I think that you two probably have a lot more experience with the 1.6 update than we do at this point. Uh, what's, uh, what's your take? What's your favorite part? Mike says I like all the dialogue expansions, and most of the new festivals are super fun, especially the Desert Festival. Nice. Yeah, I liked the little like winter fishing festival thing that we did, or summer fest, summer fishing festival. What was that? What month is it? What year is it? Uh, it's probably summer, because we are. I think we're sure in the summer, like summer right now. <laughs> I actually don't know how to check what season it is. I think you just have to look in the top right and have all the symbols memorized. Ah, I can do one of those things. <laughs> then you're halfway there. Quickly, where would I find children at this time of day? <laughs> um, I don't. Can I answer that? Uh, let's see. So, if it were during. Let's see, they, they might be at the museum having school time with Penny. Okay. They might be, one of them lives with Marnie and one lives with like Sam and Jody. I do not know where Sam and Jody live. Oh, I should do you know, know where that. Emily and Haley yes. live? Yes, I do. Next door to that. Okay. Ah, the anchor house. Susie says that she really wants a trinket pet, but they haven't found one yet. What's a trinket pet? Is that just like the... I know that you can have more than one pet. Is is a trinket pet what that is? It's a pet that you're legally allowed to put onto a keychain. <laughs> ah, I found the children randomly walking back from the woods. Oh, perfect. Take this fruit. Your parents sent me to give you fruit. You can trust me. I'm the fruit man. I'm the... <laughs> Morty. Morty of the fruit man, Morty. Sorry. It felt like a rip thing to say. All right. 
I was thinking more along the lines of uh, the Dirt Man. I don't remember this. The Dirt Man. You don't know the Dirt Man? Oh man. Does he I live on send Mulberry you Lane? So many reels. No, it was. Uh, <laughs> do you remember the? There's like a trend on TikTok and Instagram of people like saying, "We're whatever demographic." Of course we, and then just like listing a bunch of stereotypes about the demographic that they're in. Did you see any of those videos? No, but I like. I I feel like that's. Is that humor? Uh, well, they would be like, um, we're engineers. Of course, we have three different calculators for different types of math. Oh. And stuff like that, you know. That was just off the top of my head. That wasn't a good one. T-I-L, I am not an engineer. Anyway, someone did one where he said, we're guys. Of course we, and then he just broke into song. Uh, put a little dirt under our pillow for the dirt man in case he comes to town. <laughs> None of this okay. is ringing a bell? Uh, no, but it sounds really good, actually. <laughs> oh, the chat is full about dirt for the dirt man. Okay, let me catch up on this. Okay, Marnie is asking me to do something about drunken guy. Ah, it is Shane. And Shane says... Uh, that sounds like him. I have poured water. No, Berkeley, I used a tool. The water oh, can. You, no. You used the water can? <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. Shane, what's the matter with you? All you do anymore is mope around your room and drink beer. I'm on summer vacation, Mom. This is all I can do. We're in a tiny town where there's no entertainment except for actual farm work. You got a little bit of Nicolas Cage on that at the end. I like that. <laughs> Thanks. What's your plan? Don't you ever think about the future? Plan? Hopefully I won't be around long enough to need a plan. Wow, this is giving 2014, Jared. Ugh. And you made Jazz cry. So... That's on you, Shane. Alright, well now that we have that out of the way, it's time for your fruit, Marnie. Enjoy it. If you put it in a special container, it might even become something more than fruit in a few weeks. Don't tell Shane. Don't tell Shane. Or do. That's up to you. All right. Who else is on the fruit hit list? Penny. Wizard. We'll start with wizard since we're out here. I just want to give a shout out real quick while I'm thinking of it to Chance Dev for making some beautiful modular music. I listened to a track that they put together called Goofin and it had some real 80s vibes. I I think I even heard some FM synthesis. It could have been wavetable, but it sounded FM to me. And I have traditionally shied away from FM because it is very difficult to do in a way that sounds good. But this sounded pretty good. So good work. Apparently the wizard thinks tangerines have interesting properties. Is it a tangerine? I think I gave an apricot. Yeah. Whew, we're almost in the dark night for a second there. I mean, it's pretty dark. It's not quite bedtime yet, but... <laughs> Essentially. Essentially.
Okay, I'm not saying this to complain. I'm just genuinely surprised <laughs> that once again, I uh, had a chore off of the farm that I wanted to do, and I just like was doing my on the farm chores, and then I looked up and it was 6.30 p.m. I don't know how our chore, or how our farm became so labor intensive. I do. I stopped helping with anything at all. Oh wait, that's but, not new. <laughs> like most of my most of my Stardew experience has been single player, so shouldn't I be used to doing all the farm chores myself? Yeah, that's and fair. And we can't even use tools, so we should be like more automated. Is there a way to automate picking up truffles and stuff like that? I think so. There's like a Junimo hut that you can get okay. that will cause a bunch of Junimos to come do labor for you. I can't remember if it includes truffles or not. Okay. In Harvest Moon, that was the thing. You 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 would befriend the forest sprites and then they would come do your work for you. Hmm. By the way, I just hit a Mayor Lewis cutscene and I feel obligated to give it some attention because we hate him. Okay. Marnie, we can't. If word got out, it could undermine my position of authority in the town. Marnie did not like that. You understand, don't you? You care too much about your job, Lewis. There are other things to life, you know. But yes, I understand. I guess we'll have to keep us a secret. Ha <laughs> ha, joke's on you. Oof. Sorry, Marnie. Jared, you overheard everything, didn't you? Yes, but I'll keep it a secret. Or yes, and I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> if it was just if it was just Mayor Lewis, I would tell everyone. But since Marnie's involved, I'll keep it to myself. Thank That's you, nice Jared. I won't forget this. You better not. I'm gonna extort you. <laughs> Why were you hiding there anyway? I like the back of trucks. That's my favorite part of the truck. And that's what I was... I just ran away instead of answering the question. Wow. Hardcore. Oh, I'm not going to make it home in time. Ooh. I think there's a chance. I think you've got a small, small chance. What's the cutoff? Too. Okay, yeah, I might make it. I forgot about these like demon fish that we have in our aquarium. They're so yes. good. Yes. I love each and every one of them. Whew, I made it. Nice. So, why would having a relationship with Marnie undermine Mayor Lewis's position of authority in the town? That doesn't make any sense to me. I agree. Traditionally, people have kind of preferred married politicians. Maybe it's like a like a celibacy thing. Like this town has been ruled by monks for three thousand <laughs> years. <laughs> yes, celibate monks, no less. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's that he's just such a bad boyfriend that the only way he can not look like a bad boyfriend is by not looking like a boyfriend. Like, if if people knew he was in a relationship, they'd immediately be like, and this is still how you're acting? <laughs> I believe that. I believe that. Okay, I'm going to see if I can bring this mystery present to uh, Clint today. Okay. Should I plant some more of these hardwood seeds? I have six right now. I could go out to the desert and plant them again. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. Check on the ones that are there already. Yeah.
Do bombs get rid of stumps? Eventually, but you need a few. Okay. Berkeley, you were telling me that you read a book, which blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, I never do that. Um, I started a new book, so I've got a family reunion coming up in a couple weeks here, and they decided they want to do a book club for it, which I thought was a fun idea. Um, and the book that they chose was called Silas Marner. Um, it's by George Eliot. It was written in like 1860s, I think. Uh, and it took me a minute to get into. So for the first chapter or so, I was like, why does my family do this? Why do they have a book club and pick a 200-year-old book? But then it, it's really grown on me. I like it a lot. So it's about this guy. It's kind of, it's pretty similar to the Jean Valjean story. Um, the guy's like falsely accused of theft and gets kicked out of his community. Actually, well, hmm, maybe in retrospect, the uh, opposite of the Jean Valjean story. He's wrongfully accused of theft, kicked out of his community, goes and lives in this village where they hate people that didn't grow up there because of the type of village that it is. And uh, he's just trying to trying to make life for himself there, which does not sound like a very funny premise, but the book is surprisingly funny. Um, it's kind of kind of like Jane Austen. It's just like a lot of really pithy commentary on society. Sometimes just very overt. Like occasionally, occasionally it'll be through the characters, but more often it's just the author telling you, like, this is why this person's acting this way. Pretty weird, huh? Anyway. Um, and uh, I found it like really surprisingly emotionally relatable. They'll pick like super specific feelings and just explain them very well. Um, so that's Silas Marner by George Eliot. Uh, I'll, I'll put a full review on the Discord when I'm done with it. It's always fascinating to me to see how relatable books about people are still, even though they're mm. old like that. You know, it, I, I would say that our lives are nearly unrecognizable in comparison with people's lives 200 years ago. And yet, the fundamental nature of how we feel about them is the same. And that's kind of comforting to me. Yeah, same. I think I had talked about something similar after I read that James Baldwin book. Like, he, James Baldwin and most of his protagonists grew up in Harlem in like the 18, or sorry, 1950s or 40s. And uh, I have very little in common with them in my day to day life, but. Yeah, it, it feels so cool to like be able to emotionally connect with someone so different. Uh, Chance says, Family Reunion Book Club is definitely a concept I've never heard of before, but it sounds like a fun idea. Yeah, I, this is uh, the first time we're doing it, and I think it's going to go well. We'll see. I'm a little worried that the person who proposed the book is going to come and just have so many thoughts that it'll just like take the whole time hearing his thoughts, but we'll see. Maybe not. Berkeley, have you ever seen a tree with moss growing on it before? I think that's part of the 1.6 update. I think they did some new textures on trees. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. A shad frenzy has begun in Cindersnap Forest. I don't know what to do with that information. Should I go there? Should I stay away? <laughs> Should I tell my friends? Tell your friends. Okay. It's time to plant some trees. For our 1.6 veterans, what, what should I do about the Shad Frenzy? Should I go catch a bunch of fish? Oh, uh, chances that he was not here when you first started talking about his music. Do you want to say what you said again? Oh, music? yeah. No, it was, it was very nice. Um, very relaxing to listen to. 
And the sound to me, especially the synth voices, sounded very classic 80s. Um, I was impressed. I don't know if it was Wavetable or FM Synthesis. It sounded like FM to me. I was impressed that you chose to go that route because I didn't get into that for probably four or five years um, after I started getting into Synthesis because it's just so hard to make it work uh, in a pleasing way to the ear. But you did a good job. I sell oak resin. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, let me try to remember which is which. Did you already sell it? No. Okay, no, we want oak resin for making kegs. Ah, uh, okay. Mike says the Shad Frenzy doesn't matter. It's like a bubble spot, but more fish. I'm going to be honest, that name is a little bit extra for that concept then. Like a frenzy is when sharks smell blood and go absolutely buck wild, right? Yes. And I, I propose that they change the text from Shad Frenzy to the Shads are going absolutely buck wild. Right? Yeah, that makes sense to me. I just ate some pepper peppers, and now I'm fast. Ooh, that's fun. Shane said that he took it from the Joja Mart break room, <laughs> <laughs> which means it's been sitting in a decaying break room for like a year at this point. Yeah, uh, <laughs> finished the community center a while ago. The side effects may or may not be part of how rotten the food is. All right, back to giving fruit to everybody. Do you think these people actually eat it, or are they just kind of like, oh, okay, thanks, and then they throw it away secretly? Oh, I think they're putting it in a shoebox under their bed with all their other prized gifts. <laughs> Dude, the smell of rotting apricots. No thank you. No thank you at all. Meg says they don't know what to do with all the fruit. We're breaking the economy of Pelican Town. Yep. I mean, was it that strong to begin with, though? No. No, it was not. The whole economy revolves around Mary Lewis's celibacy. And if they found out that he wasn't, there'd be a run on the bank and everybody would <laughs> lose their houses. <laughs> Can you imagine doing a run on the bank and trying to explain why to the bankers there? <laughs> the mayor, he's seeing someone. <laughs> Stock market crashes. It's one of those old timey Indiana Jones uh, montages of like travel, but it's like people talking about Mary Lewis's relationship status. Mm-hmm. Um, Chance says, I appreciate that. The voices were all done during using VCO modules from Surge. I have heard good things about Surge's XT plugin. I have not used it, but it's not, I don't think it's a modular plugin, but I've heard that it is a really good free synthesizer VST to get started with. Um, Obviously, you're going the modular route, so you don't need any of that. You are you are literally cutting your own path through the jungle. But 
if you ever decide you want to make your life easy. Surge XT, I've heard, is pretty nice. Um, Megan in the chat says that for Krobus, you might uh, have better luck giving him a Void Egg or Wild Horseradish instead of Fruit. Um, uh. Which reminds me that we've got a bunch of uh, Rabbit's Feet in the gift chest as well. But, um, you can give out. Those are loved gifts. The Rabbit's Feet are loved gifts for everyone except for Penny. Okay. Is Penny secretly a rabbit? I think she just loves animals so much that she can't stand to think of one losing its foot. Mm. That Even is fair. If it's... Well, remember that in this universe, rabbits lose their feet. Just They just fall off they overnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting idea. What if it's not actually a rabbit's foot and is just like a clump of rabbit fur? <laughs> That that would be much more humane, probably. Mm hmm Jared, do you know if we have copper anywhere? No. I've been using it all to bomb stuff. Okay. Sounds like I get to go visit my main man Clint again tomorrow. Never call him that again. You're better I than Miss Berkeley. I'm going to keep doing it. Please, please it's come a thing home. Now. <laughs> <laughs> How are you telling me to come home when I'm already snug as a bug in a rug in our bed? Fair. And I'm out here in a thunderstorm blowing up trees. <laughs> Cue up the crying Wojak meme. Chance says the developers of Surge XT took the audio engine from that and turned each piece into VCV modules. They don't exist in hardware, but the fact that they provided the virtual modules for a VCV rack is pretty cool. That is that does sound cool. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I'm like way behind on this. I know you've explained it a lot. This software that you're talking about is meant to recreate um, a lot of the physical stuff, um, like physical synthesizers, analog synthesizers even. Yes, uh, but it sounds like this one that Chance is using um, goes beyond that and does stuff that the the hardware couldn't do. Yeah, uh, maybe. I have a question, real quick, before I forget. Was the dog mm -hmm. sleeping within the bed? Because when I got into bed, I accidentally right clicked on you, and a heart came up, and that's not normal. Um, <laughs> I think the dog was probably in bed. Okay. All right. Well, Anyways. The bookseller is in town today. That's fun and new. Should we go to the bookseller? Yes. Spend all of our money on books. Um, so the modules that Chance is using are not based on a synthesizer that exists in hardware. They are based on a synthesizer that only exists as software to begin with. Now, all, not all, many software synthesizers mimic hardware, and that is the extent of their design, but there are also a lot that don't. And I haven't researched enough about Surge XT or the other modules to know whether or not they're trying to emulate any specific hardware but the the behaviors that most subtractive synthesizers emulate are based on foundational hardware design choices of hardware synthesizers and if that didn't make any sense to you that is a-okay Oh, great, because it didn't. <laughs> yeah, the short answer is yes, essentially. Okay, cool. Um, Jared, the people would like you to know that you blew up an apple tree last night. Yeah, that's true, but it was seditious and deserved to die. 
Oh, okay. That's cool. Also, I think you might have the sapling in your inventory, Berkeley. Yes, I do. Oh, I've got a peach sapling. Maybe that's what you bummed. Ah, the people are wrong. <laughs> Thus we see that voting can never work in a functioning government. All the that's power true. should be in my hands. Out. Speaking of democracy, if we do pack the courts, I suggest that the new court, we just make a new court and call it the Crunchwrap Court because we already have the Supreme Court and we can't have Supreme Court number two. Yeah. And like, I mean, I think the original idea of court packing is pack them all into the Supreme Court, but then the Supreme Court is just going to unravel and you're going to have like toppings everywhere. That's gross. <laughs> no one wants that. Nobody wants that. Oh, give me a napkin. I've got Clarence Thomas all over me. Disgusting. Ugh. I specifically asked for my court to be without Clarence Thomas. <laughs> I did. I did specifically request that. I never get my order right here. There's some funky sitar playing going on right now. Is that the Is bookseller? That... I guess it must be. Is Hawking the bookseller wares. secretly also the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> That'd be cool. Okay. Good news is the bookseller's here. Bad news is you can't get there without bombs if you're us. Good news, I brought bombs, but still, that does seem like an oversight. I feel like this is kind of risky for your relationship with the bookseller to have that be your first first impression. <laughs> hey, I couldn't uh, just pick up and move the sticks out from the way like a normal person. I had to blow them up with this grenade I made at home. But I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. Oh, well, you can buy books that give you experience in different categories. That's pretty what? cool. What? Do they have them for foraging? Yes. Because that would be a game changer. Yes, they do. There are two foraging ones. Would you like me to... Oh, I don't know how this works. It has a little one next to it, so I'm assuming I buy it and it goes into my inventory. I could buy both, but... The risk is that then they might auto activate and you would be that's true yeah where where are you i am north of joja mart okay i'll be there so fast chance says i specifically asked for a court with no insider trading and this one definitely has insider trading <laughs> i'm having an allergic reaction to the insider trading right now This bookseller looks like a sad version of the wizard. I bet he's the wizard's disappointing stepbrother. Did he come here in a hot air balloon? Yes, with inscribed so with the letter great. M. Okay, nothing can convince me. Oh, it's Marcellus. Okay, I was going to say... If, if the wizard is W, this guy looks like the wizard, and his initials M, it's got to be for Magician. It's obviously Marcelo, but still. I'm sorry, I missed that because I was trying to figure out how to buy books. Oh, that's okay. It was a lame bit. Okay. Does it work? Are you a master forager now? Um, I need to figure out how to read it. <laughs> Yes, being able to read is a good first step. <laughs> did you see? Did you yes. get the same animation that, that was I did? That very was impressive. Amazing. Hold it I'm over your head. Me. Don't look at the pages. Put it on top of your head and then fan it open and the knowledge will be inside you. I could yes. have done way better in school if I knew that. Yeah, geez. 
Uh, no, I'm still at level nine foraging. Dang it. It was not enough. Did it add anything at all? Oh, I can buy these. Um, They're still there for me. Here, oh, you want cool. two more? Sure. How do I Thanks. give them to you? Is there a button I Chance. need to press? Um, can you click on me while you're holding it? Yes, okay. Whew. Aw, thanks for this book. You're welcome. <laughs> this one says Berkeley can't handle your request right now. <laughs> Try again in a moment. Chance says learning by osmosis. This is advanced osmosis. <laughs> Too good. I'm still at level 9 foraging. Maybe it'll apply when you read? go to sleep. Maybe. Or maybe it's like mostly for progressing through the lower levels. The reason I care about level 10 foraging so much is that when I get level 10 foraging, uh, all of our truffles are going to be worth a lot more money, which is going to really speed up this whole try to get to the golden clock thing. Berkeley, I bought you a book that lets you see the price of things. Oh, that's cool. Just like everywhere you go, you just know how much they should cost. Yeah. They'll never let you play on the prices right. Unfortunately, that's part of the contract that you sign when you agree to buy the book. But no, I... I'm going to walk into everyone's house and tell them immediately how many hundreds of dollars the couch is worth. Shane... Point seven five hundred dollars. <laughs> Haley, five hundred dollars. Mayor Lewis, negative five hundred dollars. <laughs> Mick says, "We're sorry, but the Berkeley you reached is unavailable. <laughs> Please try again later." Do, do, do. And Susie says, "Yes, you nailed it, Susie Moo. Too bad you can't chop trees. That's a great source of foraging XP. I think this has been like." One top three surprising bits about a uh, no tools run is how hard it is to get foraging XP. Um, because foraging is like one of the few things we could do. Oh, thanks for the foraging for the price book. You're welcome. Foraging is one of the few things we could do to make money during our first couple weeks. Um, and so I thought that we'd be golden on foraging XP, but. Not so. Actually, picking up forgeable items does not give you nearly as much XP as chopping down trees. It's kind of a bummer because, you know, when I think of like a hunter-gatherer, I definitely do not think that they're cutting down trees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, famously did not have axes. That's actually a really interesting observation. I don't this, know about that. Well, I mean, think think about, like, the shape and purpose of an axe implies so much about the person and the society they live in. I don't know. It's, it, like, if I was a hunter-gatherer, I'd probably have a spear, because a spear is a, is a great distance weapon. It's easy to make. And it's kind of just like the minimum effort, but still useful. It has purpose for my life, but an axe wouldn't really, you know, an axe only has purpose once you're building things, unless you're a Viking, and then it only has purpose when you're pillaging. Oh, I have um, a lot of hardwood now, by the way. I have 10. I don't know how much we need. Oh, sweet. I also don't remember how much we need. Did Did you ever get that cutscene with Willy where he offered to ferry us across the great wide sea? I don't know. But I I think that we were saving up for a house upgrade, if I'm remembering oh, correctly. Oh, you're right. 
which we might have received actually do we have a kitchen we do have a kitchen i've been neglecting my cooking duties it's been just frozen pizza for us the last two <laughs> years just been eating granola bars just just granola bars <laughs> um megan wants to remind you that you're not saving up for a house upgrade you're saving up for a backpack <laughs> I bought the new backpack. Look at this. I have a third row of empty space. That's so great. And you're welcome, by the way. <laughs> I did that specifically so you would stop bringing it up. And did you hold up your end of the deal? No, you did not. <laughs> I'm going to go get a refund. <laughs> Megan says you should use it then. I guess she wants you to carry around more granola bars. You want me to hold more of the two types of fruit we actually grow here? Because that's all I'm doing right now. <laughs> um, I've got some jellied apricots. Ah, Do you yes. Hold those? What's your job? I hold the jellied apricots. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good job. Point of order, Meg says she never promised that. That whole deal was in your head. It was an implied social contract. The so social contract is breaking down. Facts. I think there's some really good commentary that could be had about the social contract breaking down, but like the fact that people just overuse that phrase without elaborating at all has really cheapened it for me. Yeah, well, it's plans within plans, Berkeley. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't you dare plans within plans me. <laughs> Berkeley has gone to bed like an old person. I'm out here blowing up trees because I'm an alpha male. I'm a high value alpha male. Sigmas don't sleep. Sigmas don't sleep. <laughs> there's a there's a Bluey episode where Bluey says the line, is it because of us that you feel like an old man? Talking to her dad who's feeling really tired. Yeah. And... Um, my daughter tried to quote that line to me, but she missed a few words and said, is it because you're an old man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the answer is yes. The answer is yes. It's because I'm an old man. Oh no, we lost our two best followers by talking about alpha males they're gone <laughs> <sighs> what have we done we've escaped the matrix whoa sorry i just real talk andrew tate is absolutely hilarious and i do not understand how anybody can take him seriously i think he's an awful person I'm not saying that he should be around because he's funny. I'm just saying I do not understand when people take him seriously. There's just no way. There's no way to. The guy mm -hmm. is a joke. Could he knock me out? Definitely. He can fight way better than me. But does that make him an alpha male? No. It makes him good at punching things. <laughs> Dear Jared, tonight at around 10 o'clock p.m., a rare and beautiful event will take place. The Moonlight Jellies will be passing by Pelican Town on their long journey south for the winter. We're all gathering at the beach to watch. You don't want to miss this. See you tonight, Demetrius. Mayor Lewis, if you do not propose tonight, I will out you to the whole town. I would like to say something at this feast of the moonlight of the jellies. Mayor Lewis is seeing somebody. <laughs> Was that kind of how you were thinking it would go? Yeah, yeah. And then the giant pumpkin controlled by a cat will lean down from the rafters and say, <laughs> Mayor Lewis is seeing somebody. Oh no, we can't have that. Can we for the us? crimes of extorting the townspeople <laughs> and seeing someone, I sentence you 
to a few, to few hours. hours. Man, you man, you man. <laughs> Ugh, legendary. And Roxima says if he does propose, he outs himself. That's a good point, Jared. You've uh, you've given him a threat that he can only escape by executing himself, not executing himself. By executing, <laughs> that might be by better acting to be honest. <laughs> then Marnie oh, doesn't have to be with them. Maybe Shane will finally get his life together because he doesn't have a terrible influence around. Mm. Just saying, there's a lot of upsides if Mary Lewis is out of the picture. Fair. All right. Uh, I'm probably going to need a lot of rocks to upgrade the house, too. Oh, we have so many rocks and a lot of wood. Okay. Let's get after it. We're going to go talk to the wood lady. I gotta own up to something. I've never been interested in writing fan fiction. Just doesn't appeal to me. But I would be interested in writing a murder mystery fan fiction about Stardew Valley, where Mary Lewis is the villain. Hmm. Yeah. I think we talked about that as like a potential mod. That that would be fun. Yes. Oh. Oh, cutscene. Demetrius, I didn't tell you to get tomatoes. I said to get fruit. Classic. The scientist takes everything literally. Mm -hmm. Demetrius, what? I don't understand, babe. Tomatoes are fruits. <laughs> when a normal person says they want fruit, they never mean tomatoes. It doesn't matter what the scientific classification is. No way, babe. Jared, I'm glad you're here. You'll be able to put this argument to rest. How'd you classify a tomato? All right, here's the real question. Is this a Robin cutscene or Demetrius cutscene? <laughs> Great question. I believe it's a Robin cutscene. I think you should read Demetrius to filth. And I think that gives you the best outcome. Hey, we're going to vegetable then. Really? Wait, wait, I figured wait. a farmer would know the correct answer. I just want you to understand my point of view, babe. It's hard for me to know exactly what assumptions I should make when <laughs> you tell me something. <laughs> But I'll try to get better at it. Thanks for your help, Jared. You're welcome. All right. Upgrade the house. This is going to cost 65,000 gold. And I will need 100 pieces of hardwood. We, I was not prepared, chat. I came in here walking tall and I will leave a humbled person. We are <laughs> so far from our goal. Jude, we do have 46 hardwood in a chest here. I uh, probably should have mentioned that earlier. We are 56% of the way towards our goal. But That's I quite was, a few. 56 is a lot. That is a lot. I tried telling that to my DiffyQ teacher and he said, yeah, you still fail. That's not a true story. <laughs> oh, yeah, the chat is full of that Robin love and that Demetrius hate. That is what we love to see. I just don't think there's anybody out there who would do that, who would buy tomato unironically as a fruit for somebody without malicious intent. There's no way that that wasn't malicious compliance. And I'll add to that, nobody out there is going to say, hey, can you get me some fruit? They're going to tell you exactly what they want. 
probably. I can imagine in like a small town like this where the local grocer is only supplied by you, the farmer, <laughs> that maybe you can't really rely on the same fruit being there day to day. And so you have to be a little more abstract in what you ask for. Yeah, yeah. This is all... Uh... What's his face? The sh shop owner's fault for putting only tomatoes in the fruit section. <laughs> what we didn't see is that Demetrius didn't have a choice. <laughs> Babe, I got literally every piece of fruit in the store. <laughs> this is Pierre's fault. He's trying to break us up. Okay, I have almost made another keg. Been a while. Oh yeah, I should probably go in and look at that so we can show our dear readers what we've achieved besides running around making fun of the townspeople and handing out fruit like it's free samples. Jared, do you have all the wood on you? Yep, I do. Could I have... Could I bother you for 30 slices of wood? Yes, here is 30 slices of wood. Um, that was that really nice, exactly but that was one, one slice of wood. How do I give you more than one at a time? I think if you open up your inventory and then click on the thing you want to give and then click off your inventory, it'll just throw it on the ground. Ah. <laughs> that was go. 998 pieces of wood. I give you a 56% in giving me 30 pieces of wood. <laughs> You're welcome. I was I was playing the take one down, pass it around game with wood and just got bored right before the end. Mm, gotcha. That makes sense. So now that you've cleared out some more space, I wonder if we should get another barn or two and just like really load up on pigs, you know? Okay. Yeah. What do you uh, think? I really like that idea. Uh, do we know what the barn costs in terms of resources? Not off the top of my head, but I got a I got a wiki right here. Okay. Okay. We can do that. Costs uh, six thousand gold, three fifty wood, and one fifty stone to get the basic barn. And then for more gold and wood and stone we can upgrade it, and for more gold and wood and stone we can upgrade it again. That's so nice we, that it's always the same ingredients. We could theoretically upgrade the barn we have right now. I think the one we already have is fully upgraded. Okay. Okay, cool. Do I need to blow up the last of these trees in front of this barn? You don't Should have you, uh... to, but that would be nice. It's okay. hard to walk through here. Okay, I will do that. I'm thinking like maybe down here for the new barn. Okay. Or uh, if we want to clear out some more space and do it over here. Okay, I will buy some more bombs uh, the next day and clear some stuff out. Oh, I guess we are about at time though, so maybe we should save that for next time we play. Okay, okay, well, let's take a look at our brewery. Call this the the hooch hut. The hooch hut. All we serve is virgin Dr Pepper horchata. That's it. <laughs> That's what's brewing. 
Uh, it's looking beautiful. We're almost full up. We've got one random preserves maker, which I personally appreciate. Yeah, it was... Uh... When, when I was first making this, I thought we were going to go half and half, but then I just uh, never... Never, never made any more preserve stars. Never halved it. That's okay. Meg, Megan in the chat is concerned by the phrase "hooch hut." I, I don't see what the concern is. We're brewing moonshine in there. Yeah, so. I think you're making a hooch deal out of nothing. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we maybe spent as much money on books as we earned today, but now I've got all those cool powers from the books, so maybe worth it. True. I also spent a ton of money on copper to make a ton of bombs, which I then used. Nice. So. Well, one of these days we'll buy a golden clock, and then we can clear out our farm and have so much space, and then we can just, like, go crazy. Yeah, we're Probably slowly just a ton of barns at that point. clawing our way up the... Whoa. I went to bed. It was a beautiful summer. Now everything is dead. Welcome Whoa. to fall. Fall vibes. This is nice. I like this. My first time seeing the 1.6 fall. Oh, they added little mushrooms on the trees. I wonder oh. if I blow this tree up if I get the mushrooms. Okay. Well, that's cool. 1.6 fall. Approved. Well, thanks everybody for coming out. It's always fun to get back to the basics. The... the of the channel. Apologize if you feel whiplash between shooting insane bandits on space ice planet and uh, you know some good old fashioned manual labor but we're having a lot of fun and we always love hanging out with you. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you're new to the stream check the description or go to the about section of our twitch page and you can find our link which connects you to our instagram and to our discord uh there's been some discourse on the discord about book recommendations i've heard being peace is a really good book if you want to find out what people think about it join our discord and you can read that there you can also uh, shout insults at the mods which would be me and berkeley Mm -hmm. and uh, do yeah. many, many other things uh, by yourself and not on the Discord. You're a free human being with your own <laughs> sense of identity and self-determination. Use that. That's our channel pitch. You are an individual. <laughs> <laughs> Meg says right. she's going to flood our Discord with spicy fanfic wrecks. Please do. And I'll okay. flood it with future... Uh, geopolitics, Rex. So, and I'll I'll flood it with analogies for showing why the electoral college is a bad idea. That's the, the hero that's the SV Terra guarantee. Gotham needs, but not the hero they deserve. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.